Hey everybody, Kyle Goat here from GoatFilmReviews.com and the Goat Film Reviews YouTube channel. And I've got my first reaction to the new documentary film, Wild Life. This is a 2023 documentary that is now available on Disney+. Plus, and it was directed by Elizabeth Vassarelli. I'm probably saying that name wrong, I'm sorry. Elizabeth Vassarelli and Jimmy Chin. These two directors also worked on films such as Free Solo and The Rescue, a number of other documentaries. And I was I was excited for this documentary purely for my love for Free Solo. Um, you won't find a ton of documentaries where I find the need to purchase and rewatch them multiple times. Um, it's just not something I do a lot. But Free Solo was the one that I, I had to go back and watch again and again because it's so incredible. Even outside the theatrical experience, which is amazing, it's it's really great to see it at home again as well. So um, I was excited for that. I didn't know much about the plot, uh, but it follows uh, uh, Chris Tompkins following the, the death of her husband uh, and their conservation work throughout the, I guess I would say mostly the 90s to uh, 2015. Um, but it kind of follows his life as well, leading up through that his entire his entire life, her entire life. But it mostly focuses on their conservation work in basically trying to purchase up land in Chile and turn it in and basically stop it from being deforested and and rewild life was I believe the term or rewilding where it was to get the animals back in, get the the life you know growing back there again, and really try to save those areas from destruction. Um. I didn't know this story before I, I went into this film, but what I really love about how they do it is that the filmmakers spend time with Chris. They spend time with her following the death of her husband, following that kind of search for life once again um, and, and purpose for living because I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with when they lose someone that's so close to them. And what's really magical is how they mix the ideas of conservationism with this beautiful love story. Between these two. That's what I think is the, the film's most powerful statement is that it has such a, a beautiful love story at the center of it. Um, two people that cared about each other so much that they 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 wanted to use that love for each other and love for the, the world and try to enact some positive change. In fact, these are all people that are making a ton of money um, for like North Face and Esprit and Patagonia and all these different companies that were making a ton of money, um, but in the process kind of not doing what these people really wanted out of the companies. They wanted these to be outdoorsmanship kind of companies that were going to get people outside. And 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 when, when it was decided that basically, you know, we can't, we can't tell people to stop buying our stuff, but fashion itself works on buying stuff you don't need. And so the idea that they were able to give up this tons of, of income and decide to go out and just spend money purchasing up land, which would stop people from destroying it is a pretty fascinating story on its own. Um, and some of the, the details that come into play near the end of the film about how much they were actually able to enact is really powerful stuff because the world is so full of right now, these, these doomsday ideas of the planet that's heading down a path that we can't stop. Um, because we're destroying too much and we're not saving enough. And I do think that while that's that's very likely a true statement and, and a very terrifying statement, it's good to know that there are – that one person or two people in this case can really make a difference. They can really enact and, and you know, stop damage and save land and protect land and kind of try to reverse the clock and do something right. Two people can really do that in this film and I think it gives a message of hope for people to – Figure out what you want to do, do it at your best, and and figure out how to get it done. Because you don't always know how to get your dreams done, but the idea that these are people that didn't know what they were doing and just decided to enact change is pretty amazing. So I quite enjoyed Wildlife. I wouldn't say like it's not one of those movies that I think I had to go to the theater to see like Free Solo, but um, but it's one I'm glad I got to catch. Uh, it's a more intimate story. It's a calmer story. It's um, I think a more heartbreaking story and a more beautiful story but not exactly like one like free solo where it's like you got to see this thing in imax no no that's no, not really what the film is about so all that being said check it out when when if you have disney plus and if you don't maybe consider getting disney plus to watch this documentary because it was quite good right now it's sitting in my top 10 of the year don't know if it'll be there at the end of the year but it's a pretty good place to be at in may so um yeah let me know your thoughts down below once you've seen wild life and what's your favorite uh, Vassarelli and Chin directed documentary? They've they've done I think six or seven films um, at this point. I've I've really only seen the two. So 
I would love to hear your thoughts and what I should be watching next. Thank you guys for watching so much. You can find GoatFilmReviews.com for my many written reviews. You can find Goat Film Reviews on Facebook. You can also find me personally at Almighty Goat Man on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. You can find my show, Kyle and Nick on Film, that I co-host with Nick Plotichuk from the St. Paul Filmcast. We have new episodes every single week. All those links are down in the description, and we'll see you next time.